All right, welcome in to part one of the two-part year end spectacular here on the Power Hour. I'm Steve. That uh, guy working on that cigar is C Red, and uh, joining us tonight, very special guest this evening. Uh, it is one half of the CSW Tag Team Champions and our resident superhero. It's TJ Steele. Hello, TJ. Is it too late to go to the bathroom? Yes, entirely too late. You're gonna have to tie it. All right. Well, hour. you know what? You can go, and we can, you know. Just go. That's true, though, actually. Oh, we got no, go ahead. Yeah, you go don't ahead. Take, take your time. And we'll talk to her. Tonight, <laughs> for the first time, as far as I'm aware, on uh, a podcast interview show or what have you, is the lovely Miss Ashley. Uh, if you don't know who she is, you haven't been to a CSW show, uh, so we'll talk to her a little bit about uh, you know what she is and who she is and what she's doing. So going to be a fun evening tonight. Uh, if you look at that couch, unless they're going to jump out from under the cushions, uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, uh, the lovely Kimmy and the magnanimous Steve Boz are not able to make it tonight. Hopefully down the line, uh, they will what? be on and we can talk to them as well. What? No yeah. Boz? You know, we don't need Boz tonight. We don't, we, when you got the man of steel, you don't need a Boz. You've got Miss Ashley. We, we've, we've got, we've got plenty of guests happening right here. We'll have Boz later on down the line. Well, she does. Well, first of all, she's way more attractive than Boz can ever be. <laughs> oh, <laughs> ever. Well, thank you. Even though he thinks he's still 23, but still. <laughs> that, that is affirmative. Um, so guys, happy holidays. Thanks for taking time out of your, your, your busy festival, uh, festive, uh, evenings to, to talk to us for a little while. How were your holidays? How'd you go? How's Christmas this year for you guys? It was pretty good. Yeah, it was, it was great. Yeah, it was different, like we said earlier, yeah. but, um, but we still made it work, figured it out, you know, um, under the COVID circumstances. Right. Um, but it was You didn't cook, fun. did you? You, you didn't cook, did you? No, I mean I always cook. I yeah. do. Yeah. And, you can uh, hold I'm, on. And I'm Czechoslovakian, so I, I always make the Czech meals. Uh, I do the, the dumplings, the sauerkraut. Um, we try to, uh, you know, since it's Christmas time, do a bird. Otherwise, it'd be, you know, some sort of a beef or a pork dish or something like that. So he's actually an amazing cook. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, he does a lot of the cooking. <laughs> I'm a lot smarter than I look. I, you know, I just look like this. If he cooks, I clean. Or vice versa. <laughs> you heard it here. Uh, this is what it is. Uh, uh, I feel very lucky because I was kind of. You can't cook. I well, no, I, I, that's very clear. Although I did make one hell of a coquito on Christmas Eve, but that's new. Oh, she can eat, but she sure you. can eat. Well, it, cook, goes out, it is a festive holiday beverage. Do your math. Do your homework. <laughs> mm -mm. I just know you eat. Well, it's. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty pretty much a given. The point is, what, what I know. Look at your waist size. My waist size is just fine, bro. Yeah, I, for two people. I already went through this with Hudson. I'm working for on two the, people. I'm working on the salads, man. I mean, hell, you make three of uh, TJ. Well, for every person that cooks, there needs to be a person that eats. So it's like yin and yang. Uh, but not three. He eats enough for three. <sighs> Have you seen his family? They look like they starving. I'm just saying. They look like a kid from Cambodia that I know. Meanwhile, heel turn. Back, he read with the heel <laughs> turn. Meanwhile, back on the show, and stop ripping on Yo-Yo. That, that's neither here nor there. Um, I've been lucky enough. I feel pretty fortunate uh, to have worked with TJ uh, at GPW and then on into CSW. And I was around when Miss Ashley first entered the scene, first came into the fray. Uh, you know, since you are a hashtag power couple, uh, let's, <laughs> let's get some origin stories here about how you happen to find each other. Because listen, it, you know, it's hard finding good people in this world, let alone someone, you know, that, that will clean after you cook or eat what you make. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's hard, especially now in, in the COVID world where you know, everybody's just gone crazy. It's, it's hard to find someone and coexist with them on a daily basis, you know, and, and have it work out and be real. So I remember the first time I saw a photo of uh, this couple <laughs> uh, 
it was it was almost like a, a theatrical trailer for the new Avengers film. Because we <laughs> all want to see that hot and heavy relationship between Captain America and uh, Black Widow. Yes. Why did that name just escape my head? I <laughs> Uh, yes, and Black Widow, and here it was, Halloween time, and TJ Steele was rocking the Chris Evans look far better than Chris did, and, uh, well, well, it, we'll just let's say Ashley did look the part, and uh, I'm not going to elaborate on that too much. Go on your local Facebook. I mean, well, yeah, so Scarlett Johansson nice even heard that. Yeah, Scar Scarlett not on her best day. There, say what you got to say. Holland Jost would be like, hey, can I trade up? That's what. That's how that would <laughs> Hell, um, I, I saw it, and all I could say was, damn, who is she? <laughs> I'm being honest. I was like, yeah. okay, I've seen, I've, uh, again, when we talked about this before the show started, I've known T.J. Fowler. So, again, um, first of all, he keeps his body in top tip shape. Just, you know, shit. I wish that 20 years ago I did whatever the hell he did. Instead, I started drinking. Okay, well, my body went out today and went out. So I can never look like that. Them days long gone over with. But to see the, and first of all, like, who does that for Halloween? Like, most people just take a picture. They put out a damn movie. Like, what the hell? Yeah. I wanted to see it. Like, okay, what, I'm, I'm waiting for the date to pop up at the end. Like, <laughs> Hello? Oh, damn. This is, oh, okay. Uh, so you got a, let's be honest, a very handsome and physically fit guy and a very sexy and attractive woman. Hell, that's money. I don't care where you go. That, they are money. So. They, they are, they definitely are, uh, you know, fetching to the eye to be sure. But behind the scenes, here's what I like. Um, you know, when, when you love in this world, you know, you roll that dice and you hope that every time you're in a relationship that they work out. Sometimes it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes you get kicked in the stones and uh, you, you either break up, get divorced, whatever happens. And I know, uh, having talked to both of these people, uh, mm -hmm. they did not always come from great places. And sometimes it takes getting punched in the face a time or two on the hand of love to figure out what you are truly looking for, and then you find your forever partner. So, you know, I know you both have, you guys have traveled down a hard road to get where you are now, and, uh, you know, you're lucky, and it's great to see you guys together. It's been well over a year now, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Let's say that time. When, when did we actually, when did we say, hey, you know what? We look like we could be more than just superheroes working on the same case. When did we decide to become uh, fam? It, w it was actually the, on that night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, you, you just saw her and was like, wow. Huh? Right. <laughs> I, yep, I, I saw her in the zip up and I said, I'm not letting that get away. <laughs> No, yeah, we um, it's uh, middle of October. It's October eighteenth. Um, we did that party. It was a couple of weeks before Halloween. Um, so we had been seeing each other for for a little bit. Um, before then, um, you know, we we actually met. Um, well, not necessarily met, but we were aware of each other through social media. Um, and would kind of like and comment on each other's stuff, and that was kind of all it went for like a while. Um, we both came from marriages that were, you know, uh, in several different ways, abusive um, and bad. And, you know, everybody knows at least my situation with, you know, I have sole custody of my son. It's just me and Jackson. Um, and, um, you know, Ashley came from a, a real bad situation with her psychotic ex, just like my psychotic ex. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, way after we both had our divorces, um, you know, the, the social media thing kind of turned to, um, you know, we started messaging back and forth, decided to go on a, on a date and, uh, didn't really know any of that stuff about one another. And, you know, at first I thought she was ribbing me. I thought somebody like put her up to <laughs> giving me my own story back at me, you know, of the first date. Cause she's saying all these things that I literally just got out of, you know, um, and, uh, you know, we, we hit it off, um, big time and just, couldn't get enough of each other. And, um, and then the big day came where she met 
uh, my son Jackson and they had such an amazing time together. I'll never forget when they got done, um, you know, spending time with one another. Jackson says to her, um, Ashley, <laughs> you will be a good mommy for us. <laughs> oh, and at first yeah. I went, wow. oh, no, he just chased her away. She'll never <laughs> come back again. <laughs> um, but, you know, like she, when I saw that she kind of had like little tears in her eyes, um, I went, okay, well, it went the other way. And uh, they've been inseparable since. And he calls her mama. And, you know, we are, we're, you know, we're it's about as happy as a family can get. Um, it's it's been a blessing. She's mine and Jackson's guardian angel, truly. Mine. That is incredible, and it it's funny how uh, you both came from very specific pasts, and yeah. it that maybe that gives you both a, a special bond in a way that you can relate to your needs on a deeper level than maybe most people can because you've dealt with the same kind of hell. And when you go through relationship hell, no, no two experiences are exactly the same, but the similarities are often there. And right. uh, when you get out of relationships like that, uh, it, it, it's a while, I would think, before you can get past the skepticism of, you know, wanting to open up and, and let somebody in, especially, you know, with young children uh, involved. You know, it's always, you know, when I, when I got married to my wife, you know, I didn't meet her son, you know, until months into our relationship, you know, there has to be a comfort level, you know, it, it can't be a, a one and done scenario, especially when children, because children are, are, are young, especially young children are a bit fragile, and you don't want to do that to them. It sounds like you guys did it the right way, but it sounds like you matched up well because of shared history. Do you think that's true? Do you think you understand each other? And that's what makes it work so well? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I think it started, um, it kind of started that way as far as, um, well, coming from similar situations, but, you know, I don't think that that totally makes you kindred spirits that are going to last. I think it was more right. so an, almost an icebreaker. I think we wouldn't have lasted if we based our relationship on, you know, oh, you know, he did this to you, she did this to me. He did this to you, he did this to me. She did this to you, she did this, you know, that, to me, that that becomes almost like the of the rebound situation where we're we're having this relationship based on spite um to me into i, I believe ashley because we've had this discussion many times um it just ends up being something that you know we really were blown away with on our first couple dates and then right. we just became us we it, it has nothing to do with with the exes or anything like that um you know at this point now um you know, they are review mirror as review mirror gets. Um, and uh, it's just been our own thing, you know? I think the only thing is like, the people in our past made us appreciate what we have and mm -hmm. you know, how good we are to each other. So thanks for that, for the access. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's very important. And I think it gives you, uh, you know, it gives you a bond above and beyond a relationship bond because you yeah. know, you know, you know, how unpleasant things can be. And when you get something really good, you want to cherish it and hold on. It's, it's a level of appreciation that some people may not have. Did you know that TJ was a wrestler going in? I mean, you had to know I, a little bit. I mean, I I, yeah, I, I saw some pictures and stuff like that. Cause like he said that we were following each other for a while and we would like, like each other's <coughs> and stuff like that. So it's like, Oh, but I was very curious about it. So do you have any background? I mean, did, were you a wrestling fan? Did you have any background? Did you ever follow? What, what was your perception of wrestling? Um, well, I told him when I was a kid, I used to watch wrestling with my dad. He was a big fan. Um, so, yeah, I would watch a little bit then, but I stopped watching for a while, but definitely a wrestling fan now. <laughs> Again. She, she's a mark. She's a mark. <laughs> I'm a so, TJ fan. <laughs> That I can believe. Um, so, okay, so you guys, are in, you guys are in your relationship. You're starting out down the road. And when you came to your first show, because I remember, I remember it. When you came uh -huh. to your first show, kind of her, her, her first was our last. Exactly. GPW. It, was, uh, it was the big uh, GPW grand finale. Uh, and that was, uh, that was a hot mess. Uh, she but, goes, does everybody bleed like this yeah. at all these shows? <laughs> it, yeah, it actually it scared me. I was like, oh my gosh! Like, I was I was standing by myself. I met him there because I was coming from work, and I was like, 
whoa, <laughs> what is going on? There was a guy bleeding. I was like, oh, gosh. Yeah, I told him, I was like. That was my yeah, reaction as well, that. standing next to him. Wow, that's a lot of blood. Is that supposed yeah. to be like that? But anyway. And then he I, did. I, he, he put I, his I, arm out for me to, to brace him up on the third the top rope. And I, I just stepped away and I go, I don't know what you've got. <laughs> Boz stepped in. I go, whatever, man. I got my white gear on. I'm not the, Just you know. imagine me looking up at that monster as he's, as he's got a geyser coming out of his head. And it's like blood, blood drops raining down on me as oh he's about God. to hit me with that elbow. <laughs> he goes, TJ, here, brace me. I'm like, man, I got my good gear on. I ain't going <laughs> yeah, that, that was pretty crazy. I was like, this is my first show. I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> I still have Mitch Blake's blood on my tights that would not come out. So I will mm. forever have a, a bit of bitch's DNA <laughs> to my heart. I'm sorry for you. Yeah. <laughs> come on now. Come on. We're all friends here. So, okay, that was your first experience. And, uh, you know, obviously TJ uh, had a great match that night. Uh, the tag team titles, a uh, lot of pomp and circumstance. So coming from. No, no, didn't have the tag team titles that match. What's your man? Because of you. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Mm, mm. <laughs> Still a butthole. I was a bad, bad man back then, but I've reformed. Um, so you see them. You a fat, fat man. What? P-H-A-T. Mm -hmm. Yeah, P-H-A-T to you. Never, uh, never in your wildest dreams. It's one thing to see pictures of TJ on the internet and his videos, but it's another thing altogether to see him glistening, performing in the ring with the crowd going crazy. What was your reaction when he came out through the through the curtain and and hit the hit the ring and everybody went crazy and uh, you know he was full on TJ the superstar. Well, initially, honestly, I, I was like, oh, that's hot. <laughs> I was like, he looks really good. This is super cool. Like, I don't know. I I, I thought it was very attractive, um, but it was just I don't know. It was so much fun watching him and that like crowd. Like, he's got amazing fans. Like, they're. They're awesome. They're super sweet and respectful. Like everyone's just great. Um, but yeah, it was it was fun. That was my initial thought, though. <laughs> it was a pretty big night. And then uh, you've been to many shows. Oh, I mean, I've seen you at Northland. I've seen you at uh, at the the rec center. We did it at uh, uh, at Gary, and I've seen you at all the venues. You've been to almost every show, if not every yeah. show. I think uh, I missed one. <laughs> It's, it's a tough thing. Uh, a lot of people will say this. I've heard a lot of stories. It's, it, it's not always easy to date a professional wrestler for obvious reasons. I mean, it's a lot of time taken out of the life. There's a lot of perceptions out there. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what's your perception of when TJ goes and does his thing? Um, well, I mean, we have a lot of trust. So I think trusting each other is big. Like I, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's not hard because of that, because as long as you have trust, everything works. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. But, I mean, she does get worried, definitely. You know, there have been times, you know, that she's been a little more uncomfortable than others, whether it's me getting busted open or, yeah. you know, when I – Right. forged a doctor's signature to get back early to that was very serious. Yeah. three weeks yeah. after having surgery <laughs> that I was very wow. serious. in his stomach for god's sake um, <laughs> just for the record everybody thought that was a bad idea yeah yeah no that was scary. Uh, well nathan and all of them were all like golly i can't believe you got a doctor to sign that and i was like well i mean i technically did but i just changed the date a little bit yeah Wow. That I was very scared about, for sure. Um, we won. <laughs> and you're still the, the reigning, defending CSW Tag Team Champs. That's uh, right. And now we've, we've gone through a, a very strange year. Uh, COVID has, has hurt our business. Uh, in some ways, it's hard to quantify. I mean, you look on social media now and in other states, you know, there, there are a lot of people that are running. And, you know, even as close as Wisconsin, you see – them putting together shows with people in close quarters. But, you know, here in Illinois, uh, it, it, we haven't been so fortunate. In fact, you know, I, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but we were supposed to have a show back in November. Uh, we had the venue, we had every, the matches, the car, everybody was ready to go. And then five days before we were supposed to do it, we had to cancel it because the governor pulled back and uh, the venue that we were using, you know, said, 
we can, I think it was, they, they said you could bring in 50 people and we thought that was just not, it was not a great idea. Uh, how disappointing was that for you? I mean, you guys were on a roll, you know, going out of 2019 into 2020. And, and let's face it, January, February, and March are three shows that we did get in prior to COVID. Those might have been three of the best shows CSW has ever done with Luchasaurus and Rhino. And, you know, it, it, those places were packed. It was rocking. Uh, and, you know, to, to have the plug pulled, especially when you're holding a championship belt and you're in the prime of your wrestling career, you're, you've never been bigger than you are right now. You are, you are vaunted. You're, you're a superstar uh, of epic proportions, and now you're stopped. Hi, what? What's he read? So you said they, they were on top, right? Yeah. But didn't you create the monsters that took them out in October? If, if, if I'm correct in that, you yeah. created this mess. What? What? So let's see. You bring Chris Miller on our show and tell him he's going to be fired. And if you don't forget, you got knocked out in no oh, Okay, you're talking hold about. Hold on, hold on, hold <laughs> on. So you create that monster. And then you befriend Cody. You, you, you give him the world on a silver platter. Only for in October. Now, if I'm wrong, the three of y'all can, can tell me. Or oh, now nah, it's just three of us. Now you okay. pissed off Ashley and she's gone because you're running your mouth. I'm no, just saying. Hear you. She can hear you. I'm just saying. You created this. And the last that I saw, the Bruise Brothers, they was on their back lying on the mat. That was I not mean, my I, doing. How is it not your doing? I, that's I, like you creating Frankenstein and saying, that's not my monster, but it's your name. But really, you created this mess. So if anything, TJ should really be pissed at you. You created all of this. You okay. started this. There's more kissing going on, which is more interesting than you talking about. Sure. Well, it's more um, interesting looking at you. I know that. Yeah, I guess that's a, that's a point of view. Uh, uh, we'll ask TJ, uh, do you feel that I was responsible for Chris Miller and Cody Rhodes uh, victimizing you guys at Fright Night? I don't know. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, Tell uh, the truth. Tell the truth. It's uh, all his fault. He started this. Stop yelling at me. Loud noises. Um, honestly, I, I don't think that, uh, that it's uh, Steve's fault, to be honest with you. I think that um, after the whole GPW thing blew up in his face real hard, real hard, I think that it was kind of a come to Jesus moment for him. And I think he kind of uh, changed his ways a little bit. Um, and uh, TJ, you know, have you not been watching our show? I mean, I'm a, <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, every, I, every week he was swerving I, down, wasn't nothing going to happen. He swore. Chris wasn't gonna do nothing. He got killed. They got I can't. He said me. Willie wasn't yeah. gonna do nothing. He got potato. I mean, he just aggravated all of this all year long. I mean, that's kind of like saying that the the manager that fires the guy that comes in the next day and kills everybody is the guy like responsible for the shooting. It's still the guy that's pulling the trigger that's responsible for the shooting. Whether Steve aggravated Miller and Cody to do whatever it is that they decided to do or not, he can't live his life as a GM on the basis that, well, maybe there will be a repercussion off of something that I do. Uh, it's still Chris and Cody that came and did what they did to us. I mean, it's no surprise with Miller. Chris Miller's had it in for us ever since we, you know, dropped him for the one, two, three uh, a, a bazillion days ago when we won the CSW belts. Um, I mean, he even had a big monster with him then, and it didn't do him any good. Uh, so it's the same story. It's just going to be a different chapter. Uh, he's got a new monster, a little bit dumber than the first one, uh, a lot bit greener than the first one, and he doesn't even have a cool mask. He's just got his ugly face with his dumb biscuit bald-headed face. Um, I mean, he's a guy that we tried to take under our wing, 
we had a six man tag that he almost blew it for us. I mean, when you're almost seven feet tall and as big as him, how can you screw things up? Well, he still almost found a way. Uh, we had to carry him across the finish line in that match. So uh, I get it. The guy's jealous. He wants to take the, the shortcut, cut corners. And, you know, Chris Miller, he might not be able to cut a promo to save his life, but behind the scenes, he certainly can worm his way into young talent's mind. And he did that. He found a weak-minded, big, dumb idiot, and he got into his head, and now he's pulling the, you know, pulling the switches. He's the one that's uh, that's got his hand shoved up Chris or Cody's you-know-what and talking like a puppet for him. Um, but it's no big deal. I mean, me and Boz have gone up against guys from – in state, out of state, young, old, uh, bigger than us, faster than us, and guess what? It always ends with the same exact thing: my knee, Boz's foot, smashing in somebody else's face, and then that's that. So it's okay. Uh, I mean, it sucks that the show got canceled. You asked about that. Um, I'm not sure what you were saying earlier with the if something COVID. I don't watch the news, so I'm not sure what that is. But um, I, I guess that's why the show got canceled. I'm not aware of it. But whenever they want to schedule another one, we'll be happy to whip those guys' asses too. I, I don't care. Um, and no, it's not Steve's fault. Those two make their own choices. They're adults. They decided to go after the two top dogs. So they're going to have to uh, pay the piper. And well, I will, I will agree to disagree, TJ. Uh, we have a very good relationship. So I'm going to agree to disagree. Again, Steve <laughs> for 20 and 20 has stirred the damn pot with every damn body and expected there will be no repercussions. And as a GM, you're supposed to see these things before they come. Hell, if you need to, you need to fire people. But, you know, Steve ain't as smart as he looks as we, again, watch the archives and see every week of him getting his head torn off. And me laugh about it, because I find it funny. Again, you can't say somebody ain't going to punch you in the face. And then when you get punched in the face, can't expect me not to laugh, because I'm going to laugh my, I'm going to laugh, I'm going to laugh. I'm going to respect, because there's a lady in the room. And it's, so. not, it's not like Cody and, and Miller are going to come back when we come back and just get a title shot. They're going to have to earn it like anybody else. Uh, the Bruce Why? Because that's money right now. That's money. I want to see that. Because well, I, I will show, the day you book the show with the Bruce Brothers, Steve Byers and TJ Steele versus Miller and Cody, I'm going to be at the show. Well, we would love to have you. I will uh, put you up. I ain't the- worried about if you love to have me. My money pays just like everybody else. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> She's funny has been very difficult um no that's not how this business works you got to earn your spot they don't magically put themselves together attack people show up and 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 bust open tj steals and be rewarded for 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 a title shot You're, yeah that's... what do you think that this is aew <laughs> yeah no see what you did there not, uh, not, no, if, the... not if steve is running it hell you know so look mm-hmm. chicago style wrestling is fantastic and we do things the right way every day and they will they, they, they have because you still gm they can't be doing it the right way you still the gm look we're making I, money man rude. what happened to you quitting i thought you was resigning i was very I depressed for a while. Comes back. I was every, say that again tj what i said i quit everybody <laughs> comes back <laughs> i left i left for like i don't know was it four years or something like that and Worked at NAPW, worked at... Um, but say that last part. Everybody does what? Everybody comes back. It's not like is you know, true? wrestling is a revolving true? door. Never is say never. True? You'll be back. Does everybody come back? You'll be back. Oh. Who, me? Yeah. I'm, I'm waiting on that phone call. You have to lower your rates before I can afford you, bro. I need you to know get, what? For you, for you... Family discount. For you, I give you a south side discount. Oh, there you go. Well, now we can talk. Sounds dangerous. <laughs> it does sound dangerous. <laughs> Maybe, uh, you know, anyways, uh, so you guys had – I mean, we talk about 2020 being a tough year, and it was, to be sure, for everybody. But the Bruce Brothers, in terms of wrestling, when we did work 
you guys had a spectacular year making some of your your most magic moments out there uh you know we have seen all the matches even the ones when we came back you know and that was what i thought was amazing when we came back we were it was august was our first show back and it was hot as the dickens outside it was an outdoor show and uh you know the, it was the wind was whipping it was a little different than what, what we're used to but when the bruce brothers came out you guys look like you'd been been doing it uninterrupted all the way i mean you guys were in tip-top shape you you kicked ass like you always do uh how did you guys stop cussing in front of the lady God. <laughs> How did you stay in shape? Uh, how, did, how did you keep your, the ring rust off you to come back in such spectacular fashion? Well, uh, I mean, it certainly doesn't hurt the fact that, you know, the one guy in the tag team runs the school. So, I mean, we own a ring. But other than that, I mean, um, it, was, it was, I mean, there's never a good time for a pandemic to start. <laughs> but uh, golly, if I can't say myself that it was the like the worst timing in the world because a lot of people don't know this but um even though i've been in the wrestling business for 10 years um like literally when boz came back from his knee injury um was the first time that i myself was actually truly healthy in my entire wrestling career so that means for the first eight years and change i was wrestling with the same break that Christopher Reeves had, and this is a shoot, I'm not working, this isn't like a wrestling angle. Uh, I had a C7 break when uh, I was in high school um, and it, it completely changed my life. All the ligaments tore uh, bone from the C7 off except for a couple ligaments that stayed attached. Um, initially, I was gonna never be able to play sports again. Um, they had me do physical therapy because some of the ligaments will reattach themselves with physical therapy, the rest of them, they were going to have to be surgically reattached by going in through the front. Um, I was the first case they'd ever had that responded 100% to physical therapy. All my ligaments reattached themselves. Um, they actually even had me in a, a medical journal that Dr. James Andrews, which wrestling people actually know that name. He's a, he's a, a, a sports uh, doctor, a surgeon, um, uh, published and was a part of. Uh, and um, it was great. I was able to go back to sports, but I, I lived in complete pain for a very long time. I broke in the wrestling business, was like 260 pounds, would get tired going to the ring because I was so jacked up, but I was injured always in pain. I was, you know, taking Vicodin like it was, uh, you know, um, Pez. Uh, and, you know, every bump just felt like rigid and hard and terrible. And, and I just thought that was how my life was supposed to be until literally like 2018, end of it going into 2019 um i got hooked up with um uh, a, a gentleman dr john um ashley also goes to him a performance spine and sport in um, batavia illinois um shout out um, <laughs> but uh the guy changed my life uh, I, I completely got healthy i went from having a neck that looked like an s like a snake to straightening back out the ligaments loosened everything changed and uh, all of a sudden, I'm doing springboards. I'm working matches for 30 minutes. I'm taking a, a you know a bunch of bumps in it. I'm able to work like this all the time. And I mean, I had guys like Doug Simmons, of uh, 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 Jason Hades, coming up to me and giving me yes compliments, but also kind of caveats because I remember Doug coming up and saying, "Man, your matches right now, you're working better than just about anybody in this area. I can't believe it because you were the shits before." <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, man, I was working for seven years. Are you serious? And, Dude, uh, you weren't. You weren't this. You weren't that. But <laughs> it was just but, something you wouldn't remember. You know what I, I mean? I was just power slam. I always used to wonder, like, okay, this guy has the look. He is it. Okay. And then you would go and you work a seven minute match, and you'd come back and be like, oh, oh. And I'm like, damn, even my fat butt. I mean, that's me. <laughs> Let me do the breathing. What is you doing? <laughs> like, I could never understand it. But, and here's the, this is one of the reasons why I consider you such a uh, great person. Um, you never complained. Um, you know, you never, like, if you were booked in a match, you, you went and worked the match, and, you know, yeah, you might have been tired, or you might have, even been in pain 
but you never came back to the back and complained like some people do. You know, you never came back and was like, oh, I'm, and I never seen you take a pill. And um, I commend you on that. Uh, I did one show, um, not at CSW, uh, somewhere else, um, but it's one of my road stories. And uh, let's just say the people indulged in extracurricular activities, and there was a big pile of it on the table. Mm -hmm. And they did it before the show, before their match, after their match. And it was just like, wow, you hear about it, but you never see it. Mm -hmm. So for you to not even, you know, complain and, you know, I've seen your matches since your return. And I've seen, you know, you and Boz. And uh, Boz will forever be uh, my guy. Uh, but you guys look great together. Uh, the chemistry is there. Um, I don't know. It's something about you guys that just work. Because it's and real. It's, it's yeah. something. Well, again, one, you can see that the friendship and the bond is there. And that's mm -hmm. the problem with a lot of tag teams. Trust me, I know. Um, mm -hmm. If there's no bond, it's just two guys. Yeah. And I and I hate that. I hate when uh, promoters, bookers, who GMs, um, put two guys together that they don't look alike. Mm -hmm. They don't eat. They they don't even talk. You know, they pass each other in the hall. You know, oh, y'all a tag team now. You know, right. and then all of a sudden you expect there to be magic. No. Well, let me let me tell you, a lot of people initially when we first got together were, were giving us that kind of a stigma. They were going, oh, well, here's two singles guys, again, going together, you know, just because. Um, and normally, like you said, that normally never works. A, because two singles guys that kind of get jammed together usually are in it for selfish reasons, and they end up trying to claw at each other, and, and not storyline-wise, but like legitimately. They hate each other, blah, blah, blah. Um, but when Boz and I formed the tag team, it was, I think the reason it works is because we both did it for the other person. Like, when, when, I, when I first came back to CSW, I worked against Steve. You know, I was, you know, for uh, the behind the scenes or the behind the velvet rope here, uh, I was a heel. I was, I came back and I'm the bad guy. Um, and the reason we did this is because Boz came back from the knee injury. He wasn't quite right. The person he was working before then, he felt like was taking some liberties with him. So we were just brainstorming him, my sister, myself around the table well you know who can we work you with that's going to keep you safe and we're naming these attributes and things that we need to have and I go you know uh I don't know and Kim goes somebody like Ryan which you know that's for everyone else that doesn't know that's my my <laughs> name uh what about Steve and and uh and we go hey and Steve goes yeah what about you what, what how about we work so we went and had a match together and that match might go down as my favorite match ever because first of all, like you said earlier, Red, I never complain. I agree with you. And it's actually in some ways worked against me. I've never politicked for a belt. I've never undercut guys. I've always done the job for people and been happy to do it because I got into wrestling to have fun. I never got into wrestling to send my tapes to WWF, WWE, AEW, anywhere. I've actually never sent my, my stuff into anywhere. Um, uh, uh, because I enjoy doing this. It's not something I knew I must make money and do this. Uh, it, it, I like doing it. Um, it, it it's, it's here, you know? Um, so when Boz uh, asks me, you know, what are, are we going to be in a tag team? We're going to do this. We're gonna do I'm doing it literally because I want to help my brother who just came back from a knee injury and is not necessarily a hundred percent. And, we have the match so I can take care of him. And we notice the crowd is way, way against me. You've got no chance, TJ. You've got no chance, blah, 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 blah. Because I've never politicked. I've, I've never even won a belt there. I, heck, when you look back, 
when we won those tag team championships, that was literally the first title shot I'd ever had. I'd been in the business for nine years. The first title shot at CSW. I've had belts other places. But at CSW, it was the first title shot I'd ever had at CSW. Because I never, you know, jockeyed for a position in line there. Um, and uh, Boz and I worked this match, and no one thinks I have a chance against him. And I go over, and they're, they're shocked. You can literally see the looks on people's faces in the CSW crowd, and you don't see that often, even at a WWE show. And their, their jaws are – and so we were just relishing in that. We go, we got to do it again. So we go out a second time. And everyone in the audience is like, it's payback time, TJ. It's payback time. You're so screwed. We have a second match. I win again. You could hear a pin drop in the place. And I grab the mic. I go, hey, Boz. Well, no, you're knocked out. Hey, Kimmy, when Boz wakes up, make sure that you tell him before you were Kimmy Boz, you were Kimmy Steel. And when you're a Steel, you're a Steel for life. <laughs> and everyone, oh, and no one, I mean, people knew that we were brother and sister legitimately. But for the people that didn't, they're going, Wait, what's happening? What's going on? So we had that third match. And, uh, and the people were so psyched for it. They were, they were packed in for it and excited about it. And it was really bad blood, all three of those matches. So they never would have thought I would have came in later on and made a save for him. And we would have started a tag team all under the real premise of me taking care of him with his knee and him noticing that, man, you know what? You haven't gotten the respect you deserve here, TJ. And if I could do anything to help you while you're helping me, protecting me with my knee, I would love to help show people how you're working now and that you are working good and the first few times we went out and tagged together it was b-o-z 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 and then little by little you know we're seeing it and people think maybe boz is going mm, mm, i don't like this i don't like this when they're starting to hear the more tj chants along with it and then boz is in work and he does his stuff and he they hear you know to, to but you know bring tj in and he tags me in and most guys would go, that's bull. I'm mad. I'm the star. Well, him being the bigger brother, the, the guy that literally was my trainer and is now my brother-in-law, he relishes in that. He knows that he's bringing me where he believes I should be and doing the business a favor because I, I, am, I am good. I've been doing this for a decade. And just because I was injured didn't mean I wasn't learning tons of stuff. And now that I am healthy, I, it's it's beautiful having my brother-in-law who has such a wonderful big name in this business bring me and say hey this isn't my sidekick this is my partner and let me use this spotlight and show everyone that this partner is someone that everyone should take notice to and i and i i can't thank him enough for that i it's, it's from the bottom of my heart it will always be something that i hope well, can we everybody. can we ever say enough about boz uh no. just like <laughs> just like you boz Believe it or not, people, Boz was my trainer. Um, and um, outside, so there's only a few that I credit with my training. Um, so, of course, the great Sam DeCero, Hunter Payne, and Austin Roberts, and of course, Steve Boz. Oh, right there. And you know, for me, Boz was another one of those guys, uh, and Marche, you know, but the crazy part was, you know, there were times where I was just done. Sure. And, it, you know, then Boz gets in your ear, hey, brother, let me talk to you for a minute, brother. <laughs> and it's like, dude, I don't want to hear shit you got to say. <laughs> you know, and... Wait, he calls you brother too? What of heck? course, you know. And, <laughs> you know, and I love uh, Boz to death because he's genuine. Um, and, I mean, like I said, you can, if people don't know you, and I think maybe I look at it differently because I know both of you. And... First of all, I'm going to be honest. I didn't know Kimmy was your sister. So, so to yep. now, and I might have known it, but I'm old. See, no hair. <laughs> you know, so. Um, to see you guys again, I can feel the camaraderie when you guys work. 
I can see it. And that's crazy because I'm not at the show. I'm watching footage on YouTube or Facebook, and you can see it. And to me, that makes me happy. First of all, your time is long overdue. Um, uh, and again, I again, it shows the person you are. Um, we know people, and I'm not going to drop no names. That would be so unprofessional. But we know people, TJ and Steve, and I'm sure even lovely Ashley knows them too. They they <laughs> politic. I want the belt. I want this. I want and I've been doing this for 18 years. I I've never politicked either. You know. Now do I feel like I've made an, a name? Yeah. So I feel like, yeah, uh, I ain't no pre-show, but uh, I'm damn sure uh, y'all can have the main event. I do the first match so I can get undressed and <laughs> right. go, go home, you know. But, Unless the crowd's uh, still hot. Right. You know, first match, hey, they ready for it. I, I can go by the main event. They like, but. Um, I hate to especially get at an indie show four and a half hours later. Right, right. You guys should, uh, again, Seriously, why you got? And I know Boss has been on TV before. And again, this is not blowing smoke up y'all ass, but y'all need to be on somebody's TV. Just, oh, just Thank the you. appearance of you guys. You look a million dollars. Do you know how many Steve Boss and TJ Steele shirts I can sell? <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, the merchandise is off the chain, you know. So. But you guys keep doing what you're doing. I think, uh, again, to echo what Steve said, when you look back, yeah, 2020 has been a real crappy year for most, especially me personally. But one thing that I learned today is that, um, and it's crazy, 2020 is what you made it. Oh, man. And, you know, you guys mm. have – what's up? Oh. Okay, uh, everybody go, uh, okay. Um, look at you guys, you know, not just professionally, but personally. Like, again, look at both of you. You guys are happy. Inside this pandemic, people are probably killing each other right now. There's probably a man choking his woman right now. Yeah. You know, like I can't stand. But look at you guys. You guys. We do that too. <laughs> hey, we don't need this. Is a, yeah, this, this is a work. Uh, this, this is a work. This, this is a rated G. We can't oh, y'all yeah. can't bump us up to PG thirteen. No, we rated G. It's that new uh, Fifty Shades of Red. You know, so <laughs> so um, again, you know, I commend both of you. Uh, Ashley, TJ, um, for making 2020 not just professionally and but personally uh, a year uh, that I see has uh, stood. And with only what's that? Three days? What? Four days left in the year? You know, I'm sure you guys will be you know fine and go into 2021 kicking butt, taking names <laughs> professionally and loving each other as a family, uh, personal. So. I've been looking uh, at Ashley's hand, massaging the, the <laughs> muscular chest of uh, one TJ Steele, and I'm trying to make out if there are any rings on fingers. Now, this is that, <laughs> this is that time of year where how tends to make uh, – Romance amplified, and I, I did see. Yeah, Steve, continue, continue. <laughs> I did see some posts on social media that a certain hashtag power couple were shopping for accessories, shall we say, uh, <laughs> loving merch. We'll call it. Um, uh, if you want to, you should put a ring on it. If you want to, then you should put a ring. On. Oh. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> K, K fade, baby. K fade. 
So I'm not, you know, like I said, I'm just throwing it out there. I didn't see a ring when you were doing the, but you know, might have been the wrong hand. Maybe you're. This you're is the wrong hand. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> say, say it like this. Um, we believe in doing things the right way in the sense of I could either sneak around and try and get a string and tie it around her finger to see her size while she's sleeping and, uh, you know, save up the money and then, then go looking for a guy to buy the ring from. Or when we know we want to get married, which is, we're already at that point. Uh, you know, we're looking at homes together. We're, we're doing all the things that a married couple do already. We figure, why don't we make it special and go and do it together? Find exactly what you want. Show it to me. Find the place that we want to get it from. And, uh, and then kind of, we, we do understand that COVID is kind of screwing things up for a lot of different reasons. Um, we don't want this gigantically huge wedding, but we do want them to not be all like looking like surgeons at the wedding and, yeah. uh, you know, us to only be able to have 15 people on the list. And um, so we have pumped the brakes on some things, but the, uh, the beautiful posts that you saw were us um, gearing up as far as getting the sizing, getting what she wants. So we are on that track. We are headed to that place. I'm not going to say anything else because it's going to ruin it. So shut up. And like I, I said, gotta dig. save that out. shit, <laughs> bro. Well, um, well, how so. about I save you? I'll save you and just say, Red, don't do that. <laughs> I just go out and buy a damn ring. <laughs> I understand that. And, 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 and I'm smart because I'll ask from jump, like, what's your ring size? Like, that's, <laughs> that's one of my first date questions. It's like, forward, what's, your, right. what's, what's your ring size? Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. And that's, that's mine. Yeah, She's got a ton of them. A lot. You know. Anyway. So. That's uh, a lot of confidence, man, for a first date. I know, right? You know, hey, but when you know, you know. Would Would you write your first name down and then write my last name after? Let's just see how it sounds. Nice to meet <laughs> what you. What it looks like. Let's get a feel for it. <laughs> Ring uh, shopping was try it on. <laughs> Ring shopping was definitely an amazing experience, and it was very, very special, so... Well, that's, that's wonderful. Love is in the air as we end 2020. And that's, that's, I think, why I wanted to bring that up because, you know, you, you hear people talking about how they've lost loved ones and how they didn't get to see loved ones. And, you know, love has taken quite the ass kicking in 2020. Uh, but it's nice that there is still, you know, love stories happening uh, with people I know, with people in our business. And, you know, these are the things that should be shined up. Shining beacons of examples of what you said. 2020 is what you make of it. It's uh, certainly given us a lot of bad circumstances. Uh, but, you know, TJ Steele and, and Miss Ashley have done a fine job uh, finding joy in a time that could be, uh, you know, filled with sorrow and, and, you know, stress and trepidation. So that, I think, is a great message. Uh, what is love? Don't let me... <laughs> Don't hurt me. Red actually said something interesting. Uh, what what I say? What I say? One or two things interesting every episode. I got to pick them, but you know, they're, they're there, hidden in the bravado between the cigar smoke. He said you belong on TV. And uh, I think that that is a, a thing. I think that that is something that is true. I think you have everything uh, that people on TV should have and things that people on TV don't have that would be unique to you. Uh, we both work for a, a little company uh, that does some TV stuff. And, uh, you know, it, I, I'm not going to, I don't want to say anything about it, but have you seen Chicago land championship wrestling? D does TJ Steele available now on Amazon prime? Yes. <laughs> does TJ Steele have his eyes on what's going on in that promotion? Because I know you know John. Uh, you know certainly me and Red, and there are you know you Marche is is as a player on that roster. You know a lot of people over there, and uh, like I said, a body like that, a personality like that, a talent like that, uh, you know, should be out there on on the big stage too. Not that CSW isn't a big stage; it sure is. But do you think that maybe if the offer ever came, if if uh, you ever got a knock on the door, and and uh, our esteemed colleague John Bullard said, hey. Uh, what do you think? Is that something that TJ Steele would be open to? 
Well, uh, you know, John Bullard is a, is a lot of things. He's a, he's a smart man. He is an ambitious guy. Um, he's a caring dude. He's a bald guy. Um, he loves to wear outlandish suits. He indeed does. And, um, Are you talking about me or John Bullard? He's also very, very, uh, very generous guy. Um, you know, I did his show, um, you know, that was a very important one that, uh, was a follow-up to what you and I did, uh, Steve. Yeah. Um, you know, it was kind of the, uh, the, the, even though he was nothing to do with the situation, he, he kind of stepped in and, and made the save for you and I, Steve. Oh, um, he did a run-in for us, you know, and, uh, and he bailed us out. Um, you and I tried to do something that the, for the people that saw it live, it touched them in a way that helped change their lives. Um, so that they could gain some strength and, 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 and gain a piece of themselves back. And people um, are still talking we, about we that. The, the rug out pulled out from, from, from underneath us um, for reasons that were neither my fault nor yours. Um, you know, I don't think that could ever be rectified, um, you know, but uh, we were both kind of sitting there uh, just uh, in the rubble of what had happened. And, and here come this white knight, uh, John Bullard with a, uh, yeah, uh, I've got a cable TV show. Want to come on? It was kind of like, uh, nah, I'm good. Like, yeah, yeah, of course I do. You know, I mean, for crying out loud, I'm still, I still have the, uh, the bracelet on here from Rain. Always, which is, you, you know, always have this on. Yeah, always. It's the, uh, the, the, you know, causing or bringing uh, awareness to to uh, sexual assault and sexual abuse. Um, and uh, and and so first off. I, I will always be in debt to John Bullard. Um, if that guy calls uh, and asks for a favor for me, whether uh, whether it's to come and do a match or whether it's to uh, you know take care of somebody that uh, you know isn't mowing their lawn that lives next to him, the only thing I'm asking is whose car are we taking because <laughs> I'm gonna help that guy out. Uh, I owe it to him. Um, but uh, to to answer it more specifically, um, yes, there there are talks with me and John for. Uh, um, for for Chicago, uh, and I guess it would be more like Indiana. But yes, um, it's going to come and it's going to happen. It's it's not going to be um, something that uh, that we do half ass. It's going to be something special, um, which means it's going to be somebody like a Vic Capri. It's going to be somebody like a Matt Duar. It's going to be somebody that I feel um, we can give a, a match that people will leave going man that that's not necessarily but watch uh, as far as the amazon prime situation goes in the COVID garbage uh where people finish watching that match and go fuck you know that that's the whole that's it right there that that's what i want i don't want to just come in and and you know have a throwaway match and, and have it be something that just kind of utters um so it's in the works and we're going to make it happen but it's going to be special I look forward to calling that match uh, with great pleasure. Uh, I, I have the good fortune of being able to work uh, at CSW and Chicago Land Championship Wrestling. And if you were going to handpick two promotions to work at, uh, I feel like I'm pretty lucky to be able to work for both people, uh, both Boz and, uh, and, and John Bullard are great people. Uh, in fact, you know, C-Red was talking about being trained by Boz. Uh, I wouldn't be at CSW without Boz and TJ Steele. Uh, they kind of rescued me from a sinking ship, as it were, and kind of brought me in and, uh, you know, let me do some fun things. So uh, I, I owe you big for that, my friend. And uh, uh, Dude, are you kidding me? Any, anybody that I've ever put the word in for, I'm not stupid. I only put the word in for ones that I know that are going to be something special. So then, then later on, I can take credit for it. Um, we, <laughs> whatever credit is available it's you know i appreciate that um so here we are uh it's it's the last week of the year we're about ready to hit new year's eve uh 2021 uh you know everybody is saying i got i can't wait till 2021 like something's gonna happen magically at midnight right <laughs> i'm like i'm scared of 2021 it's gonna be awful <laughs> yeah, yeah. I keep saying, you know, it, it, optimism is great and we should all be positive. I mean, because you can do a lot more with positive feelings than negative. But when we wake up, you know, in the morning on January 1st, 
very few things will have changed in the general. I mean, we still have a, a man in the White House uh, for at least another couple of weeks uh, that has uh, certainly made a certainly made a spectacle of 2020. That's for sure. And at least you know what year it is. And, <laughs> and we still have, uh, you know, we still have uh, the COVID that we're we're working through, and you know, mm -hmm. people are still struggling, but you know there's just something about new year's where the, the year ends and the new year starts. I, I know it's just days on a calendar and, you know, time is linear, et cetera, et cetera. But there's just something magic about that day where it's like, you feel like you're, you're stopping one thing and maybe you can turn a corner somehow. If, if all it is is mental, I'm okay with that too. What do you think? What, what's on your mind for 2021? You two. What do you want to do next year? Get married. <laughs> Well, there you go. Spoiler alert. <laughs> it got you you heard it here first. That's an exclusive. Because you need um, one. What I want to do 2021. <laughs> you know what? If, if 2021 uh, things get better and the world returns to a certain state of normalcy and you can have the wedding you want, uh, I, I would, you know, I would be thrilled to, to hear that that's happening. Um, but you know what? You guys have found forever. So I don't, th I think you can do it on your own terms. So as much as we'd all like to see it and say we broke that news here first, uh, you know what? You guys don't have to be in a hurry. We did. We did. Well, that's we did. what she said. <laughs> you know, now, it's not official, but she said it. So. Well, we know. We know it's that. official. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I I want y'all to wait so y'all can have the wedding y'all want without the mask and all the people y'all want so I can come. And mm -hmm. I'm being selfish. You're gonna get a box full of sea red mugs, coasters, and shot glasses. That that's you're gonna. And be what's wrong with and what's wrong with that? Give them away to people. I was gonna say, and we'll be regifting them for yeah. years. <laughs> you know, you like, got you give them away at the wedding as a little <laughs> gift thing. Like, thank you for coming. Here's a sea red. <laughs> and when they ask, who is the little small black guy on my glass? Oh, he's just he's a dear friend of ours that donated these for everybody he's a family yeah. member <laughs> i'm that distant cousin that they keep in the back then don't let out too often so. <laughs> he's gonna be the first we guy pull it off man I, I go to the tanning salon enough you know she's puerto rican and i'm darker yeah, than half her family so. again boss calls me brother so <laughs> i mean again hell you know again i'm that i'm way in the back you know when y'all be like Family photo. I'm the one in the back trying to jump up. <laughs> hey, hey. That's great. Um, so marriage, wrestling, uh, you guys have seen it all. You guys have done it all. One more thing I want to touch on because I think this is cool too. Uh, TJ Steele has always been very proud and an advocate of little sis. And uh, you have to be extremely proud of what she's doing these days. Uh, looks like the sky's the limit for her, no pun intended. Yeah, I mean, huge things. She just uh, she just went over on the Impact Champion um, there in that tournament. Um, I mean, it seems like she's getting calls from from everywhere. Uh, I, I would not doubt if we come back to uh, to CSW to have a vacant title because uh, they're going to put that kid on television. I, I'm telling you, she's, uh, she's got a bright future ahead of her. She's very young, but she's respectful and she works hard and, you know, whatever she wants to do is probably going to be whatever happens. So. I feel like you have a great deal of influence in that young lady's life and career. And uh, I have tremendous respect for you for that because, you know, that is not an easy gig when you're that young, but to have a stable hand helping you through it is always a good thing. Um, you two have cut some pretty dynamic promos. <laughs> I, knew, I, knew I, knew oh I want to talk about the promos. That was his idea, okay? <laughs> um, see, Red, did you see the Super Mario promo? <laughs> I saw it and then I watched it again. <laughs> Just the end, probably. <laughs> but it wasn't for TJ. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Same. I uh I mean I'm I'm gonna be real. I mean earlier they, they gave us their the, their backstory <laughs> and hell I'm jealous as hell. 
<laughs> do you think about this? How many people do you know actually like? Like, I can take this thing now. Like, like, actually, oh, never mind. I did the same thing. Oh. Okay. Never mind. Because she going to watch this, so never mind. <laughs> it's it's the same it's the same story you know only difference is uh my stepson <laughs> you know he's the one that set the whole thing but it started with a like like, like. <laughs> anyway but back to the mario yeah I, but again it wasn't because of tj i mean i like you You're my boy well, we, have- we brothers but it wasn't because of you that's all right. <laughs> well, we had a lot of fun making it, so. <laughs> but, that's what I love. but again, <laughs> and we kind of talked about it. this. We talked about this earlier. I mean, so you guys doing that one and then doing the Captain America Black Widow. Yeah. That's what I, I, I'm loving about this relationship, that you can see the enjoyment. Like, I don't see her like you got to put a gun to her head and be like, you going to shoot this with me. You know what right. I'm saying? You know, it, yeah. you can see that she's having fun, you're having fun. You know, oh, my God, like, you can see the energy. And it's like, oh, wow. And you guys put out a good product. Oh, and, man. you know, yeah. that's, like, crazy. Because if I have to shoot a promo with Steve, <laughs> no, it's not going to be good. Good partner, hard to find, and I'll keep looking. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> I, I want to say this. I think that at some point in 2021, it has to happen uh, that, that when TJ Steele comes to the ring, I feel like Miss Ashley has to be in these really tall stilettos at ringside. Uh, doing uh-uh, a- don't do stilettos. Uh, if, if anybody can rock the stilettos, it's her. No, I'm not saying she can't. Yeah, they're, they're it, they just them. they don't mix with ring steps. <laughs> that's true. That's true. But I think uh, all I'm gonna say is remember Diamond. Do you know how many bad ankles we had afterwards? You know, mm-hmm. so you know. Then I got to hear the fussing. Well, you made me wear the stilettos. <laughs> okay, maybe we'll make them the little little stilettos, but still, <laughs> I think it's fun because the couple uh, that plays together stays together, and it seems like you guys. Uh, get a kick out of playing, and uh, that's that's good to hear. Uh, and a good thing to end 2020 on is a love story, a happy story, and a story filled with hope. Which is why, even though uh, we had to change our plans and didn't have Boz and Kimmy, I thought it was still important to have this show because sometimes the world just needs a feel good story. And TJ and Miss Ashley are well. This was better. This was. I mean, I love Boz, but I mean, hell, we got to hear the love story of the year. Shit, oh. they done motivated me. Hell, oh. what is love? Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Okay, let's. Yeah. And uh, and make sure that you guys uh, stay tuned for New Year's Day. CSW is going to drop oh. uh, our holiday special. I, um, I have where not. we finally wrap up the. Uh, the Moody saga of getting him back for the the CSW show after the pandemic and then the kidnapping that me and Axel performed on Moody and the subsequent uh, escape slash spoof of trains, planes, and automobiles or planes, trains, and automobiles or uh, the classic holiday movie. Um, And it will be on New Year's Day. So watch it or else you're a piece of trash. I just need y'all to put a disclaimer on y'all stuff. Oh my god! I'm used to I'm used to a promo where say what you gotta say, be done, and it's <laughs> over. And y'all making mini movies like y'all Michael Jackson or something from the eighties, <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, damn, how long is this? <laughs> it's not like I want to cut it off. It's like I I really don't have the time, but. <laughs> I'm the Tarantino of cutting promos. <laughs> but, and, and, and I've learned if you put out a promo, which is the movie, never watch it at work. I can't watch them at work. Oh. No. Oh. The last thing yeah, I want to do good. is trying to be watching, and my kids be like, "What are you watching?" And then it's like, you know, I'm supposed to be watching, and I'm looking at y'all. Y'all, y'all find some busy work to do. Go, go find. <laughs> 
you know, because I'm watching y'all. So I've learned to do that in my spare time at home uh, when I'm talking about Steve when he ain't around. So, but uh, please keep it up. I was say, <laughs> now you've given me something to look forward to on the first. Uh, Other than Cobra I, Kai. I, I pray, yeah, see, that uh, Cobra Kai and, uh, <laughs> but I can, I'm sure that, that TJ's uh, video ain't eight episodes long, so you know. Yeah, I, I hope, please, TJ. I've I seen hope. advanced stills of it. I've seen some photos from this uh, video, and uh, I actually am going to watch this before I watch Cobra Kai because I'm very interested to see how they do it. I but know. But see, now it depends on what time they drop. <laughs> but see, TJ will mess around, and it'll be like ten o'clock in the morning. I'm already two episodes in the Cobra Kai. You know, so <laughs> you not Cobra Kai. You tell Daniel Sound to watch off for a few minutes and watch the damn video. Hey, this is a PG, so you can't be talking about wax on. What's oh, I want you to wax off. Oh, for Christ's sake. oh, you nasty. God, and it's the woman present. Oh, <laughs> anyway, TJ Ashley, it, I mean, I can't speak for the dude over there that want to be wearing my colors. Um, but I will say, uh, this has been an honor and a privilege. TJ, me and you go way back, like four flat ties. <laughs> Ashley, I can't wait to meet you in person, uh, sweetie. Yeah. Um, you guys are awesome. Um, and I'd be remiss. Um, it's my show too, damn it. Uh, <laughs> so I lost my friend yesterday, my brother. Uh, so this shot goes out to the one and only Brody Lee. Uh, bro, you are missed. You are loved. We are praying for your wife and son. And we know that you are in a better place and you are putting boots to faces to people in heaven. You might be standing at the gates. I don't know, kicking folks out. And I would probably see that happening too. So, as, but don't, my jaw still hurt. Just saying. And I enjoyed that very much. Rest in power, Big Rig. Rest in power. Yes, definitely. Amen. Guys, Woo! this has gone by in a heartbeat. I hope you had a little bit of fun. We appreciate you taking time out of your holiday season to enjoy us. Uh, Miss Ashley, now the world knows who you are. So you can't be hiding in the shadows anymore. You are now an official character in Chicago style wrestling. So she's she's been more over than I am, like for the last six months. Year six months. Uh, do you can you blame uh, the no, people? I'm, I'm fine with it. I, it used to be, hey, this is uh, this is TJ's girl, and then all of a sudden I started hearing, hey, <laughs> that guy wrestling, that's Ashley's guy. <laughs> He's got I, I mean, like that. they're amazing. So. <laughs> I can trust, trust me. Our friendship probably would have ended <laughs> her first show there, and I would have been out there and be like, "Who the hell is that?" <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, hand me the mic so I can cut a promo quick on her. But you know, <laughs> oh, I mean, hell, God. to to again, to the victor goes the spoils. So. To you, TJ. I, I, I tip my hat, sir. And, you know, thing. <laughs> you know, like, damn, you lucky. Hey. Oh, uh, if you're watching, I'm, I, 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 I love you, dear. Sorry. <laughs> we got to cut this thing. I still got to go pee from the very beginning. <laughs> <laughs> All men married to We poor. told you to go in the first place. You didn't want to go. You can't leave her alone with you guys. I, I, you said all that stuff. True. Smart man. Places. All right. On behalf of, uh, we want to thank you again, TJ and Ashley. We'll see you again down the road. Look forward to seeing what you do in 2021. On behalf of my partner, C Red, I'm Steve. It's the Power Hour. We will see you tomorrow night with part two. Part uh, two. Part two of the big, <laughs> uh, big year-end spectacular. Guys. You're great, as always. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you all on the flip side. And y'all have a good evening. <laughs>